He's uh, Kevin Mala, Major League Baseball Network analyst, World Series champion, 2004, joining us here. Where's your ring, Kev? You know what? I didn't bring it today. What? It's sitting. It's sitting in the apartment. I'm at Mitchell Modell's apartment right here. It's amazing how lifestyles are rich and famous. I had the ring out. I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna go. What do they? What do they say when they see the ring? You know what? I wear it more though, and I'll tell you the story. Because at, at the end of the day, check. Like, are you that guy? So I, I didn't wear it. And, and this one guy told me, he says, wear the ring. You know why you wear the ring? Wear it for the fans. Because if you're at the dinner, how often does somebody come up and get a chance to see a World Series ring? I said, I've never looked at it that way. But if that makes sense, right? Because, yeah. you know, you don't want to always wear it when I'm in flip-flops and a tank top. And okay, there's a World Series ring. But why not wear it? So I wear it to dinners and stuff. I didn't wear it to Danny's uh, show, though. I should have. Yeah. I wasn't a big deal. But why team. wouldn't you think about my fans? Do you have any? Yes, One, I do. I got two, four right over there. Five, six, seven. Yep. Have and you a ever, cup of coffee. Have you ever loaned out the ring? Oh, that's a great. Do you know the story real quick? I lost Josh Booty's 1997 World Series ring in New Orleans at Caesars. He got a ring two weeks in the big leagues, right? He was our first pick. Got called up. Bonilla goes down. Gets a ring. We're heading to New Orleans to watch Denver. And, I forgot who the Super Bowl was. It was like Denver, Atlanta, maybe. Was that the Dirty Bird? Fritzy. Fritzy, yeah, Broncos, New Orleans. Fal Broncos Falcons after the Broncos Packers Super Bowl. My bad, one not to me and remembering that. I couldn't remember, <laughs> yeah. but, but that was in New Orleans. So he he's driving. We're driving from Beaumont, Texas. He's got the World Series ring. I go, bro, give me that ring. I think I had like four days in the big leagues. I put the ring on. We're hanging out. He's, he's messing with Tim Couch and Joey Harrington about who's a two-sport champion in high school. And he goes, Millar, show my ring. I got a World Series. <laughs> I, I look down. True story. I look down. It's gone. I just went to the bathroom. I sprint to the bathroom. This is at Harris. Whoo! I my wife's going, ring's gone. You know when you wash your hands, you yeah. take your jewelry off, you put I left gone. Lost his 1997 World Series ring. So the joke of it, randomly <laughs> asked that. He asked for my ring, and I said, no, 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 we're not playing that game. So yeah, I lost his ring. He got 16 grand though for insurance money. Didn't want the ring back. So he wanted the 16 grand, not the ring? Took the sixteen thousand one hundred dollars and I don't know what to do with it. Josh Booty, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, Paulie. Josh Booty, who got a World Series ring with Florida in 97, he had five at-bats that year to earn a What did he hit? He hit 500. No, so 600. You can't hit 500 with five at-bats. <laughs> yeah. Let's get ready to see. I'm like, what was he with two and a half for two and a half? <laughs> yeah, he, had, yeah, he was three for five on the season. He earned that ring. All right, yes. He could hit, too. Power. But he was a great athlete. Unbelievable athlete. But Lost his but, ring. We're still boys. Miserable feeling. Didn't know what to do. Walking down Bourbon Street, almost crying. There's a story. Is there somebody who wears their ring who shouldn't wear their ring? Because they have no, <sighs> they, they didn't really earn the ring. Aside from Josh Booty. Aside from me being Manny and David's teammate. <laughs> I'm that guy, <laughs> no, by the no, way, no. Dad. I, 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 I was hoping you'd say <laughs> yeah. it so I didn't have to I say it. I gotta be Kevin. honest with you. That's me. <laughs> uh, Scott Rowland, when we were with the Blue Jays in 2009, you know, I wore, I wore Scott Rowland out. He's a big six foot three, no hair, bad, you know, just grumpy old. Hustle, hit a home run, head down. I got it, Scotty. Uh, bottom line is I would wear him out. He'd look at me, Kevin. Uh, oh no, I said, Scotty, you tried so hard. Cause I don't think you got a hit that year. I said, you guys had cozy Jeff Supan and Jason Marquis and Woody Williams. You guys tried so hard, those Cardinals. And they were like the mighty Cardinals <laughs> in 04. And he's just looked at me, Kevin, did you even play on that team? <laughs> I don't remember you playing because Poppy played first and, and, uh, you know, and the McKaywoods are coming for defense. How so, many, uh, how many events you get in the world series? First pitch I saw in the World Series, Woody Williams, 88 belt high, top of the green monster. I think it was one for seven cents. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Sat on the bench, pinch hit, uh, the games three and four. Yeah. But you were there for morale purposes, weren't you? Yeah, you know, Dan, you just I'm just a cowboy up guy. I'm just a good clubhouse guy. I'm Johnny Gomes. I'm the active Johnny Gomes. I grew the facial hair, right? I wasn't a very good but, player. But did, you know that. I could hit the heater. I could I could pull the heater. I can give out bloody towels over the third base side of the heater. I was just that guy. That was about it. I wasn't a good player at all. Wait, Dan. bloody towels? You know when you when two old pitch you yank something and you're oh, over yeah. taking a <laughs> bite of your hot dogs. And next thing you know, they're waving the towel. <laughs> trainer, <laughs> trainer. That's Millar again hooking a ball. I mean, I, I led the league in foul ball homers. That was nice. True story. What? Why is that funny? I led the foul I, ball I, homers. I, I'm not laughing. No, I had 74 that year. Active 20 in the. <laughs> that was fair. <laughs> So, yeah, I was just, I wasn't a very good player. Couldn't run, throw, hit, or field. Uh, had 11 uh, plus years in the big leagues. I was very lucky to be a nice person to Manny Davis' teammate. But did you, did you go out of your way to be friends with the stars? You know what? Were you, were I you, like people. Were you phony, though, that you like, no, acted like you like shilling and, 
Like no. he'd laugh at his jokes and things. Yeah, we, 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 listen, I, you have to laugh at Shill, right? He walked in there and he had those calves that were this big throwing 98 miles an hour. I didn't know where the power came from. Yeah, I like people. We had a good group. People ask about it. I mean, you did it on paper, Dan. We talked about it a thousand times. We weren't very good. Mark Bellhorn at second, Billy Miller at third, Kevin Millar at first, Orlando Cabrera. And then you got A-Rod, Jeter, whoever's that second, Giambi. It didn't make sense. But at the end of the day, that's why our team gives you hope. It's like Dustin Bedroy. You watch him. If he came walking this door, he wouldn't make your 13-year-old junior high team. You're like, is that Dustin Bedroy? He's barely this, this size of this desk. But he gives every kid hope for this game. That's what makes our game special. He's an MVP of the league, and he's five foot one. That's why you gave people hope? I gave people hope. Here's a guy. I wasn't drafted. I couldn't do anything. The, so I tell kids, just play. Play. Don't listen to that scout. But, but you... So you didn't phony up to Manny or Poppy or Francona or because they want to. You want to make sure they keep you. Like we we can't no, get no, rid yeah, of Malari. Yeah, yeah. No, I get I get where you're going. So you can use that who kissed butt. No, I wasn't yeah. that guy. I was the guy. I, I was the guy that was just there and didn't go away. Derek Lee, six foot five. Dabrowski trades for Kevin Brown, gets Derek Lee from San Diego. I'm 26, the bad body first baseman. But would grind you in spring training. So I hit 400. Derek Lee's hitting 100. So Dave Dabrowski, Clef Chen, and all be like, oh God, I gotta play this guy. So you just didn't go away. You know that, that I had to be that guy, right? You know that guy. Yeah. You just don't, they don't go away. They're not very good, but they don't go away. So here we are. I'm on Dan Patrick show in the studio. Yeah. Shouldn't yeah. be here. And look at my you career. You should have Manny Ramirez sitting right here, but he's over there coaching Triple A, getting biased to the show. Wow. Well, he may be getting fertility drugs. He may get his prescription refilled. Hey, we. <laughs> We were in the player notes. We got we were in the old four. <laughs> hey, we were in the old four. Wait, you just moved right past that. Ten year anniversary, and I go, I look at man, he's got this mohawk. He goes, I'm a coach player now. A what? You mean a player coach? No, I'm a coach player. Yeah, coach player. <laughs> All right, we'll continue with Kevin Millar. Uh, I, you know, we'll actually talk some baseball here. Let's do it. That was story time. And I got some questions for you. I want to interview Dan Patrick uh, at the end of this show uh, here. Okay. What about the Johnny Damon naked pull-ups? How often would Damon do that? It's not a made-up story. Johnny Damon, leadoff hitter. Fully one, naked. Fully naked. Everything. Right? It's four and a half to seven minutes for a first pitch. He's fully naked. He's leading off. There he is doing uh, naked pull-ups. You know, four or five. Not a big deal. But it's socks, jersey, pants. Boom. Next thing you know, he's on second base. I was just looking at Johnny <laughs> naked in the train room. I'm a nervous wreck because I just, I, you know, I'm 615. I'm out there wired up. I got red hot all the way down, including all the body parts. Sweating. Johnny's like giggling. Hey, dog. Hey, dude. What's up, bro? And next thing you know, one handed double. If he used two hands, he'd hit 40 a year. He swung like one handed, but hit 20. Man, you're wound up. Bro, I'm excited. We're here. Usually we're on the phone. I'm usually running around a hotel room. I can't hear you. You're talking about something. We're here, bro. Uh, it's good to see you. I can touch you. He's, no, don't. No. He's Kevin Mala. Uh, <laughs> he co hosts Intentional Talk with Chris Rose uh, weekdays on the Major League Baseball Network at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. We'll come back. The man who uh, pumped out 170 career home runs and just under 700 RBIs for an entire career. Yeah, 699, dude. That hurts, That's doesn't brutal. it? That brutal. hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, it hurts. I didn't come back one, one. I mean, one time I should get it back. Yeah. <laughs> Ground ball is short, run scores. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Somebody cost you, didn't they? Uh, you no, look back I, and I wasn't good. <laughs> Be better. <laughs> All right, we'll come back uh, more with Kevin Malop. He won a World Series championship. In 2004 with the Red Sox, Kevin Millar. He didn't earn it, but he got a ring, I should say, in 2004. Right place. <laughs> uh, you can see him on Major League Baseball Network at uh, 5 Eastern every day with intentional talk with uh, Chris Rose. He's uh, Kevin Millar. Oh, man. He just, you start telling stories there. It's always fun. That's my only strength, by the way. Did just you have a, a walk-up song? Yes, I did. What was your walk-up song? <laughs> it changes. When in Baltimore, it was Foreigner. I'm as cold as ice. When I was struggling, that was my song. You know, that da 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 So when you're one for 27, you got to come up to as cold as ice. I mean, that was it. But my go-to song was Godsmack, Sully Erna, I Stand Alone. Uh, you know, we became friends. Groupie, you know, he's a Red Sox groupie, so they're from up there, came buddies. But that was my go-to song, Godsmack, I Stand Alone. Did Big Poppy know what city you guys were in when you played? Or Manny or Big Poppy? Big Poppy knew. Big Poppy's all there. Manny at times would be in left field, and here we are in Oakland, and he thought we were in Minnesota. You had to remind him where we were, and that's a true story. Why? You know what, Dan? That's a great question. I don't know why. At, at times, I think, you know, because you hit 40 and you drive in 130, 
that everybody thinks you're normal. It doesn't mean you're normal, right? If you can run a football and you score 25 touchdowns, they're, they're, we're, some guys are crazy. But do you see Cabrera? Manny was good crazy. Cabrera as a as a Manny-like hitter? Boy, I tell you, just talked about this with, with a guy, just random guy. There's three of the greatest hitters I've ever seen in their prime. Take, I mean, I'm going in their prime. I think Miguel Cabrera is better than all of them in his prime. Okay? Triple crown at this level when they have relief pitchers, Danny, that come in to get you out from the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, that just come in to face one batter, and he hit 350, 40, 125, wins a triple crown. In this generation, amazing, and can't run a lick. Manny Ramirez in his prime. I didn't see anything better with two out RBIs. Grace, you put a guy in second base and you need that run, and that bullet goes right back up the box. And then Albert Pujols. In his prime with the Cardinals, I mean, first guy in the history of the game to 30 and 100 his first nine straight seasons. In their prime, those are the greatest three right-handed hitters I've ever seen. Who's better? Flip a coin. You're not going to go wrong with one, but it's hard to say Miggy. Cabrera's not. numbers match up with Hank Aaron and Willie Mays. It's, I'm telling you, watch Miguel Cabrera. I was just at the Yang game two days, Monday, Tuesday. What about Bonds, though? Can I? Bonds, hey, and I don't want to go into any other stuff. As far He made the game look like Nintendo. He would, he would be on deck. I'm with the Marlins. Charles Johnson and I are sitting there. He's laughing, leaning on the bat. He's not even watching what's going on. Next thing you know, we're bringing in a lefty, Vic Derensburg. He's talking to somebody on the, in the, in the, you know, in the seat. Vic Derensburg's dr- jogged out. He's thrown five pitches already. Has, Barry Bonds hasn't even looked who's pitching. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Walks up to the dun 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 dun. Dr. Dre, by the way, was his walk-up song. Mm-hmm. Here goes Barry with his feelers, nice looking tight, two five getting in the box. Next <laughs> thing you know, oh oh slider, gone in the water. Now the game's not that easy. I gotta know who's going. I gotta know. I, I'm trying to. I'm you know get timing like little league, right? Oh yeah, there's the old Tommy Amansky on deck. Bonds hasn't even looked. He's talking to somebody in the stands. Oh oh slider, boom! I looked at CJ. I go, really? Is the game that easy? Seventy three homers. Now he made it look like Nintendo, right? Yeah. Those three right hand hitters we talked about, though, grace in the game I've ever been around. Uh, let me ask you about pitching. Um, Kershaw is fascinating. Mm. Breeze, different error. There's a guy in our network that thinks he's good looking. He's not that good looking. Greg Amzinger thinks he's way hotter than he is, but he did make one good statement. Clayton Kershaw breathes different air. What he's doing is like what Pedro did. Remember, remember back that generation, that era? Yeah. It was like everybody had two and a half to threes if you were good, and Pedro had like one six. Here you go. This is Clayton Kershaw. It's amazing. But why? Why? He's got a magnificent Barry Zito back in the day curveball. He's got a, an electric, elevated type fastball. He's got a funky delivery. He's a big kid. He comes at you. He hides the ball well. You know, he's got a rare... World odd, you know, thing that gloves cupped. So a lot of times you throw 95 and I throw 95, your 95 might play a lot harder if I can't pick up the release point, you know, like Papelbon always had that little late life. Clayton Kershaw's got that with this slider and he's got this. He's got this, that, that it factor. What it is, I don't know. But I tell you what, he cares and he's a winner. You believe in Verlander long term? You know, that's, a, that, that's, that's, that's the, that's the million-dollar question. Watching the velocity right now, he's pitching at 90, 91, 92. He's not 95, 98. Where does that go? I don't know. It's a lot of innings. He's got a lot of innings in his belt. That's why the long-term deals on the, on the pitchers, that's a tough question. You know, if you and I own a team, that's the big magical question. Do we pay four years, $25 million, for John Lester, use an example, for $100 million, or do we go seven mm. for a hundred, you know, 32 million. It's, it's that long. There's a lot of, but innings. if I said you can have price Scherzer or Verlander right now, moving forward. Well, you got to go with the youth, right? You got to, I mean, price. David price has probably got the least amount of All right, Scherzer or Verlander. <laughs> wow. I mean, Scherzer, Scherzer now throws harder. His stuff's probably better. Verlander though. Now this is, this is the question real quick. Now with price, I, my question is who Rose asked this. Scherzer is expendable. Rose asks, who would you want to have right now, moving forward, these next two months for the Tigers? I said Verlander. I think there's going to be that mm. extra. You're going to see the extra level in his back pocket because now I think it's time to prove to America. In the playoffs, he's great. He struggled this year. He said, this is an odd year for Justin Verlander. But I'm telling you, I wouldn't give up on him because Justin Verlander can pitch, and he wins in the playoffs. Would you rather have the year that uh, he won the Cy Young MVP? Yep. 24 and 5, I think. Got it. Or – this year as a 500 pitcher and you are dating Kate Upton. I'd rather date Kate Upton and take the 500 pitcher with the long-term guarantee money and the five ERA and walking out with Kate Upton in all white in Yankee stadium. I'm Justin Verlander. 
Hi, Justin Verlander. Did you guys have groupies with the Red Sox? Yes. Still do, Dan. I still I got MLB groupies now. You do? Yes. I'll walk out right now. There's going to be somebody. They just, mine looked like the NASCAR. <laughs> I got the 52-year-old NASCAR mom. Like, Kevin, you're so funny. I love Millar. It'd be great. Something because I'm a good player. She's a funny guy with the bad what body. Was, what was the most dangerous town to go into? Chicago. <clears throat> New York City was always going to get you in trouble because nothing closes. You can get a turkey Reuben at midnight to 5 in the morning. Um, it's a big city. Boston's a great city. Wait, wait is a turkey Reuben a code word there? Or is it... It's code word. It's boys club, Dan. I'm not going to sell it boys club. Hashtag okay. boys club. Tweet us in at the Ant DP sale. All right, all right, all right. You got questions for I me. I got questions. Right. I want to interview Dan Patrick. Right, so we're There's five rapid fire questions. I'm tired of Dan always asks a question. Here we go. Number right, one. Okay. You got five. Who's had a better career, you or Rich Eisen? I have. Hashtag fact. Oh, hashtag hell yeah. Way richer. Okay. Number two, one ESPN broadcaster that thinks he's better than he is, Danny. Mm. Mm. You can't say boomer either. I love me some Chris Burmer. Don't even say that. Uh, 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 Skip Bayless. Skip. Great call. What a great call there. That's an honest answer. Number three, pick up basketball game. Who gets more rebounds, Bob Costas or Al Michaels? Mm. Costas. Bobby's going in tight. He's scrappy. Little. Yeah, he's scrappy. What about if his hair gets messed up? Well, it, yeah, you may have to stop and you know comb <laughs> it. But, but I, if, you know, Bob. Bob's a uh, scrappy. That's right, he's scrappy. Right. You're right. Number four. Yeah. More overpaid, you or Jim Rome? Jim Rome. <laughs> I, 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 I don't even. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I got one Patrick more. Last calls one. Out Rome. Last one. Last one. Which one of the four Danettes asked to borrow money the most? McLovin. McLovin it is, and that's the five rapid not, fire not questions even. for the Dan Patrick show. Kevin Millar, Major League Baseball <laughs> Network. Hey, thank you for coming by, buddy. Hey, buddy. Anytime. Bring the ring next time, all right? Done deal. All right.